Right, so another little project, I say little project, it's quite a big project really, that we've got on at the minute is for a customer that's got a T4 EFR7670 kit. And the time when he first purchased that kit, we didn't offer a three and a half inch downpipe. Um, and now we do. So he wanted to go for that three and a half inch downpipe. And then at the same time, what it does to make him a full three and a half inch exhaust system. So we're going to kind of go through the process of making that. It's um, a lot more of a challenge than just making a normal three inch system. Three inch system is still pretty tight in places on this car, um, but totally doable. Three and a half inch system. It doesn't sound like it's much bigger. Like you kind of look at like three and a half inch, uh, you think, oh, it's only half an inch bigger but that's quite a lot in circumference and then therefore in diameter. Uh, and then for things like kind of over the axle area and then the downpipe, it is quite tight. So we're gonna be doing a few pie cuts um, and just, uh, yeah, we're gonna go through the process of making it and show you the challenges. So the first problem is that because the, with a the T4 kit and the size of these EFR turbine housings, and we've got this on our kind of like jig manifold here. So it's not actually a manifold, it's just a flange attached to a head flange, which is screwed into the block. So this, this positions it in the same position as if it were attached to a manifold. So that's kind of like uh, what we used to um, work out random stuff like this. And again, another good use for my car, um, my poor car that never goes on the road because it's always doing things for other people and products. But that, that's what it's for. Um, so yeah, one of the first challenges is because this manifold, because, because the kind of turbo ends up sitting quite low, um, we could get it higher, but that would mean like throwing the primaries up really high and then that gives you problems in the top of the engine bay. So the turbo sits kind of low. We, do, we won't want any lower because we're then going to struggle with an oil return. Um, but it's better to put the turbo low and then kind of figure out the exhaust at later date and keep the manifold nice and compact and a nice and neat design. I think that's probably a lot more crucial um, and, I, and kind of have a slight downpipe compromise. So because the downpipe, because the, the, the turbine housing exit sits quite low, um, it's about an inch lower than our V-band kit for like a Garrett. Um, it means that getting round down under the exhaust tunnel, missing this engine mount, is quite tricky. Um, if I show you with a kind of off the shelf three and a half inch bend, you'll see what I mean. So this is like an off the shelf three and a half inch bend. Um, obviously it's quite a bit bigger than a three inch bend. But if I put that just on the edge of the turbine house in there, you'll see what I mean. We haven't really got any room in front of the dam, in front of the, the engine mount to then get another bend round under the tunnel. So we're going to have to use some pie cuts. We, we can get tight, slightly tighter bends than this, but not much tighter and certainly not, still not tight enough. This is a 1.2D bend, which is obviously slightly bigger than a three and a half inch center line radius. It's uh, off the top of my head about 3.8 or nine, I think, center line radius. Um, so we're gonna have to kind of um, make a bend. So we do that with, with pie cuts. So that's like lots of segments of tube, all cut at an angle and welded together. It's, you can still create a pretty smooth bend, but you can have total um, freedom over center line radius. So, so the center line radius is how, how kind of wide and sweeping the bend is. A tight center line radius is a really tight bend, and then a, a, a wide center line radius is a big sweeping bend. Um, and we need a really tight bend in there. So we're gonna kind of make our own center line radius up. Right, so making pie cuts, there's loads of videos on this on the internet, but I'll give it a quick run through. Um, first thing I do is find the seam of the tube, and then I'll mark a line down it on the other side, on the outside basically. That gives us like a center line then. And then we need another line, which is directly 180 degrees from that. So this is three and a half inch tube. The circumference of three and a half inch tube is 240 mil. So I will then rotate the tube round, put a mark at 120, draw another straight line down then. 
So then that's got myself two lines perfectly 180 degrees from each other. The less of an angle you have, the more welds you've got to do and the smoother the bend will be. So some people do like 10 degree pies, some people do seven and a half degree, some people do five degree. You can kind of do whatever you want really. Um, the only problem is like I say, you have, you have more welding to do with, with the lesser angle, depending on how much of an angle you want. And if you only want say 45 degree angles and that's all you're ever gonna need, um, you could probably go to a you could probably go um, to a slightly smaller angle because you're not going to need many pies to make up that angle of bend. So, because we're probably going to need like a full 180 and then maybe another 90, we're going to do seven and a half degree pies, which is pretty much what we use on most things. Um, but because we want a really tight centerline radius, we're not going to have a, a very long pie. So. I can demonstrate this once I've cut some, but basically the longer the pie is, the bigger that centerline radius is. So it doesn't matter about the angle that's used. What, what's crucial is the length of that pie cut. So we'll get some cut and then I'll show you what I mean. So once we've got our line marked, we need to set up a centerline on the bandsaw. So with the tube kind of locked up in the vise at the bandsaw, or just enough to move a little bit. We basically just need to measure between here and here and get the center of that. So again, this is basically 90 millimeter tube. So we want 45 millimeters on that center line. That's where we want our pointer to be. And that's gonna set our center line. So that when we do our first cut and we get our first angle, we can rotate the tube around back to our other center line and get another perfect Centre, centre line cut. So yeah, we'll, we'll get a we'll get a first cut started. We've got to cut this straight edge off. So we'll get the we'll get the bandsaw set up at seven and a half degrees. We'll cut this straight edge off, and then we'll start cutting some pies. And now we can show you the kind of difference in how we, how we make a different centerline radius. So we've got our off the shelf kind of extruded bend. They, they, they tend to be called mantle bends still, but they're not, they're not mantle bent, they are extruded. So this is like a four inch centerline radius. And then we've got here some pies, which are like off the shelf uh, pie cuts we sell. And this is a three and a half inch center line radius. So this is what's called a 1D. So it's one times the diameter of the bend. And that gives us um, a pretty tight radius. Uh, what we've cut for on this exhaust system is a 2D center line radius. So what we end up with is, when these are all actually put together, is a very tight bend. Um, hopefully I can hold them on. You can see how that goes to like a full 90 degrees um, and barely takes up any space. So again, obviously, it's um, the more, the tighter the center line radius you go, the more restrictive it is. But you, you've still gained all that internal volume. So the bend might not, the, the gas might not move as fast through that bend, but you're not gonna have the same temperature build up. It's just about trying to increase that area, increase that volume for the gas to escape from the turbo. So we might have quite a tight centerline radius, but we've gained so much internal volume that the gas will inevitably run cooler as it comes out of the exhaust. And the cool thing about doing pie cuts is if we can change that centerline radius as we go up, as we go by. So we might have the first 90 degree bend out of the turbo, quite a tight centerline radius, and then we can actually gradually um, increase it and to get an, a nice sweeping bend. That is the beauty of doing pie cuts. They're very time consuming to do, but we can actually change that radius as we go as well. So what I'm gonna do now is now I've cut these and prep these. I'm just gonna tack two lots of three together to give me two 45s. Um, I do anticipate that I'll probably end up tacking them together for a full 90, but I just wanna do them in 45s to start with. It makes them a bit easier to hold. Um, and I don't think I'm going to need to kind of uh, kind of compound bend 
that that angle really. Um, certainly not the first 90. The second one I might. So by compound bend, I mean um, like if you look inside here, because we cut them all on the seam. If I was to tack them all up on the seam, which is what I'm going to do, I'd end up with a perfectly concentric bend. But if I actually twist them all a bit, I can end up with a bend which starts to kind of spiral as it as it bends around. Again, it's quite hard to explain, um, but you just have to use your imagination. <laughs> so we've got our two sections of pies packed together. Um, again, these are going to be they're going to be tricky to weld, but eh, that makes it more fun. Um, and we've also got this flange tacked on. This is like a, like a special flange that we have machined to take us from the three inch outlet up to three and a half inch. Super easy in a sort in a kind of like super short space. So j just before I put it up on the car, I'm going to line up those weld seams on the inside again, like I was doing on the bench. Um, and guessing that I might end up doing it there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to don't put that in your mouth, Adam, you're about to speak. Then I'm going to... So I'm going to line it up on that seam there, and then on the outside I'm going to translate that to another mark. So that when I put it up on the car and I can't see the inside of the seam, I can see where we're at, and then if I want to change it, it gives me a reference point then. Make it a bit easier when it's on the car. So yeah, I'm just going to get this up on the car now. With these EFR clamps again, the, probably the, probably the one of the kind of crap things about EFR turbine housings is they don't have any kind of locating ring, um, like all the Garrett ones do and the tile ones do. Um, I did see somebody um, turblown on Instagram. They do a lot of um, Mazda rotary stuff, and they're kind of investing in a variable AR turbine housing. So it's like a twin scroll turbine housing with like a little flap in one side that they can push all that gas down the one scroll um, and they've kind of um, had their turbine housing manufactured with a ring in it to have like a, a locator on the downpipe it's just a lot it's a lot easier um, you don't have to kind of like guess that you've got it in the right place but yeah that'll do us for now the clamp does kind of more or less hold it in the right place but it's always nice just to have that kind of confirmation of it just slotting in on the, on the ring then um, right, so we've got that, and we've got our other set of pies. So what I'm kind of hoping is that we can kick out away from the block, and then we can um, kind of come around so that we get away from the block nice and quickly, and then we can use the rotation to turn us back around and then get another bend in, basically. So I'm hoping we'll have something like this. Because if possible, I would like to get onto a big radius bend as soon as possible. Um, so what we might have is, um, say, some pies, this bend, and then maybe some more pies. But I'm still unsure. If I have a bit more of a play around with it, we might end up on some 1D pies. We'll see. See, I think what we're going to do at this point is, because we got out there quite tight, quite quickly, which is what we wanted, I'm going to switch to these bigger pies. Um, that's kind of what I would prefer to do. Obviously, say you want to get onto that bigger centerline radius as soon as possible, and using that really short centerline radius has um, has made it quite easy. So again, we can get a few of these lined up. I might just tack a couple of these together. Um, yeah, I might just tack some of these together in pairs to make them a bit easier to play around with. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to get. Whoop, I think we're going to get down there quite well with these. Um, 1D pies. If I kind of line them all up on their on their seams, yeah, that gets us uh, to a pretty good position. So if we actually start to rotate these, because we want to come down away from the turbo now, away from the block, but we're also going to start to shoot down under the block. So I reckon if we start to rotate these just a fraction, quarter of an inch maybe, six millimeters for our metric friends. Start to rotate them maybe six millimeters at a time. 
we'll, we'll see how we go with that. So I'm going to tack three or four together and see how we get on. So we've got this tacked up now and you can see how we're kind of stepping the, the seam and that's going to give us a kind of um, bend that is, is twisting at the same time. So it's not much, it's a bit tricky to see on camera, but it is kind of twisting as it's bending down. So if I put that up here, and you can see we're, we're still well within where we want to be to get down um, past the engine mount. So I think what I'm going to do now is tack a few more up with the same kind of twist and see where we get to. Right, so tacked up these uh, more 1D pies and with that there, it's still not quite going to be tight enough to come round and miss that engine mount with as much clearance as I'd like. We, we kind of need to be a bit more in here. Um, so with the other pie cut, the other really tight pie cuts that I tacked up before, um, in between, like that, um, we're now getting to a really good, um, really good setup there. That's, that's more or less exactly where we want to be. Uh, might end up with a bit of straight in there, but that's getting us very much in the right direction of getting down um, to that big bend that we're going to have underneath the sump. So I think what we'll do now is I'll mark these positions, tack them up, and then we'll probably start welding some of these up. Because the worst thing about pie cuts is that the more you've got, the more they move when you weld them. Now obviously I've kept my fit up pretty good, but with the amount there is there, you know, probably got about 10 welds or more to do already there. So there's gonna be some movement in that 10 welds. So yeah, we'll uh, get these tacked up, have a, have a bit of a look underneath the car to make sure we are definitely in the right position, uh, and then we'll start welding them up. Okay, so we've got that tacked up. Looks pretty good. Uh, we kept it pretty close to the block, which is what we want. We don't want it sticking out into the radiator area. It's a bit hard to kind of uh, assume that um, on camera because we kind of, there's a radiator which goes here, obviously. Normally, we don't normally run with a radiator delete. Um, so yeah, I can see now that once we get a piece of straight pipe in there, um, we're going to be pretty much in the right position. Um, so we can't work out how long that piece of straight pipe needs to be or, or anything else now. We need to get some welds on here because so there's a good, good possibility this is going to move around quite a bit. Um, and yeah, it'll be a bit of a schoolboy area to go and kind of tack up the whole down pipe and then weld the whole down pipe then find it doesn't fit after. This is the beauty of doing these kinds of custom applications. We can just weld it as we go. Right, we've got the rest of the, that lower half welded up now. So just the three more welds. Um, like I say, again, left that last one because we want to check it back on the car, check, see if our marks still line up. Then if they do, we can tack the rest of it together. We're probably going to have to weld this piece underneath as well. Um, but I'm tempted to try and give ourselves a bit of... Um, a bit of extra clearance maybe and leave that bit until after we've started maneuvering around the engine mount and and, and kind of through the offset um, subframe tunnel so yeah ne ne next thing is just to get this back on the car so these uh, EFR flanges would be so much better if they had a locating ring but what do I know uh, Bog Warner know what they're doing And just try and get it centered again that's the thing because they're not uh there's no there's no kind of like um there's no kind of like ceiling ring you can kind of move it up and down and in and out so you, you kind of have to use the clamp to try and center it um, just let it naturally come into that position and then obviously we want it closer to the block than that we want lots of fan clearance so that's somewhere near and then we want which way around was that that way I think no can't remember that oh, it must have been like that yeah 
and then as we kind of discovered gonna need to make this straight section a little bit longer but that lower one actually does line up pretty well um, on the mark still on that that put that permanent marker mark that I've got that still lines up pretty well so I think I'm just gonna measure that gap looks to be about seven eight millimeters maybe um, and then cut a longer piece of straight and swap that out and then see what that looks like and then kind of um, get rid of the stand and just hold it at that point right we've got this longer piece cut and tacked in now and then with this lined up on those permanent marker marks we can get that lined up we've got the, the heights basically bang on um it's pointing in the right direction so yeah we can go for that so yeah i'll just tack that on there now and then we'll come back and tack this piece on um, and then again we'll probably end up welding like one two three Yeah, that one, that one, this one, and then probably well the other three after we've just triple checked it again. Can't check it too many times, really. Got that tacked up on the marks. So underneath the car, I'm gonna try and get this as straight as possible. Obviously we can tweak it once it's been well, um, once we've welded those top two welds, but I'd rather not. I'd rather just try and get it bang on. That's it, we've got that tacked up. Um, just a quick try on the car. I have to like twist it round. Being careful not to bang it. Bang, bang, it says. Um, and it starts to get pretty heavy to hold. And again, these uh, Borg Warner clamps are a bit of a nightmare. They're like spring loaded. Okay, like these Borg Warner clamps are like super tight when they're new. So you can barely even get thread on. Once you've tightened them down once, they kind of come loose and they kind of get a bit longer. It's obviously they, they stretch and kind of form into position a bit. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, that's like bang on what we wanted. It's uh, as high as we're going to get it. Um, we probably couldn't have gone that much closer to the sump. Again, you kind of can't see around this side, but there's a a bolt which hangs down this side we've got about 10 mil clearance on that got about 10 mil to the block plenty of clearance around the engine mount so yeah that's uh ready for welding so we'll weld it up um like I said, i'll probably weld these three joints um and then i'll leave these three until we start working on the other end of this because at some point we have to put a joint in it um so yeah, we'll probably end up with a joint about here somewhere. So we'll have a V-band joint in there, but yeah, time to weld it up. So that's it, we've got that refitted. It still fits well, it's still lining up, bang down the center of the tunnel. It's about as high as we can get it. Any higher than any higher than that, and we say we're gonna start struggling for clearance on block, sump, um, Again, we want to be able to make sure we can get those bolts out in the lower sump without taking the downpipe off every time. So we can just about get them with a flexi head. Um, so yeah, we're ready to start working on the, the kind of rest of the downpipe. We'll probably have a joint in um, here. That's like a good natural place to put a joint. So we're gonna have a couple of pies to bring it over and then a couple more pies to take it back and then back down into that center section. So yeah, we'll get cracked on with that next time. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time. <laughs>